I want to make a sprinkler in Unity, like an actual sprinkler. Not a fake sprinkler where it looks like it's watering my garden, but it's just a visual effect. Okay, so what will I need? I'll need water, I'll need a sprinkler, and I'll need a garden to sprinkle the water on. So let's get started. For a working sprinkler, I'll need working water first, like an actual interactable water. Like in this demo video, I actually found this video from a slideshow which was on making 3D fluid simulations in video games. Fun with fluids? Oh boy, am I ready to have some fun. Okay, well, new idea. How about I just download a tool that already exists? Surely I'm not the first person that needs liquid water, right? Well, my options are either to spend $100 or learn vector calculus, so I think I'll just do it myself. Before I go all 3D, I should master the 2D. So I got started with the 2D sprinkler first, and I got something going, which was just a bunch of blue balls pushing each other around. Here you can see some basic water pressure as well. Then I wanted to put a pedal in the middle so we can see if it can actually sprinkle this water around. At 5000 amount of force turned out to be the magical number where the water actually started to behave like a sprinkler, so that's awesome. Well, that was very mediocre, but it's time to add a whole another dimension to this problem anyways, literally. Unlike usual, just throwing a thousand balls in my face didn't solve all my problems here. Hey, well, I know I'm going in circles, but there has to be a free tool to simulate liquids in 3D. I saw a glimpse of it in the whole list of all websites, the Unity Forum. As you can see, there are clearly many tools that do what I want to do. The Nvidia one sounds promising. They even have a Unity asset. Ugh. Well, they have a brand new GitHub repo for it, but it's a standalone tool, not suitable to work in Unity out of the box. On the other hand, I found this sus GitHub repo from some random guy that claims that this is the unofficial Unity asset for the Nvidia Flex. After losing my computer to a virus, I had a chance to set up the repo, and my god, it worked. I set up this quick demo scene. If you're wondering how, the simulation works similar to 2D in the sense that it's just a bunch of balls bouncing around. This one is just optimized to work better than just using rigid bodies. Now that we have access to 3D fluids, it's time for our first attempt at a 3D sprinkler, which kinda looked like green jello fountain at first. The color is just customization, so that's easy to fix, but I also had to tweak with its physical properties to make the liquid less gooey. With some moving pedal action here, I achieved a lame water park status. Okay, now that we have an MVP that does what it's essentially supposed to do, it's time to push this thing to its limits. A garden sprinkler is about 2 inches tall. Okay, and how far can it push up water? And finally, how much area is it supposed to cover? Well, um, out of nowhere, I actually found something useful in Quora as opposed to inane garbage, which is what I'm used to. But so the area to cover is 15 to 50 feet. So I'll stick to 50 feet in this project, which is 25 feet each way, and that is 300 inches in freedom units. But remember this point, because this will reveal itself to be a major pain in the ass later. A sprinkler is supposed to be 2 inches tall, but in Unity, it's 0.3 units tall. So just to set our conversion, one Unity unit will be 6.66666, okay, well, this will be annoying as f***. So let's just say the sprinkler head was 1 inch tall, so our rate will be 1 unit unit equal to 2.5 inches. The sprinkler must push water 15 inches upwards, which will be 6 unit units. And for the diameter, we'll need 300 inches, which should be 120 unit units. Now, 120 is far, but I actually forgot to convert my units, and I went out 300 unit units when calculating. And I haven't realized this mistake while I was recording, so I just kept getting mad at the sprinkler and improving it, to the point where it could reach a whopping 125 foot diameter, so wait until the end to see the strongest sprinkler you have ever seen. If there is one thing that I learned while I got my STEM degree, is that if you're testing something, it must be detectable. You won't believe that when I just set the fluid generator's layer to water, and then place the box collider with trigger on, such that it gets triggered when things in certain layers enter it, it didn't work, so it was useless. I tried using a particle system, since they have a built-in collision detection, but not only did it not work, it looked straight out of a shit Roblox game. So I kinda got stuck at this point, but then it hit me. The water still interacts with objects physically, so I can just put these rods straight up and watch their rotations, and if they get pushed away, I know water has been there. So I can just put a bunch of these detection rods all over the place, but they looked kinda depressing. So I got this grass shader, and I hid my rods in between some nice fresh grass, and can you even tell where the rods are? Because I sure can. And something about the way those giant silos jiggle was great though. To reach as far as I incorrectly calculated, I had to crank the fluid speed up to 50, and it was reaching detectors up there as you can see. This is kind of a lame sprinkler though, since we wanted to water the whole garden and not just the edges. So I first set it at a more sensible angle, 
and then I started rotating it around. And now currently, the sprinkler looks amazing, right? All the detectors are turning on, but it's lies. If you look under the grass, the water is so slippery, it just slips over the whole range and turns the detectors on. And at this friction value, I can see the water sliding, like as if it's on a flat surface. But if you remember, we are trying to imitate a garden, and soil absorbs water, so I went with a much higher friction value so that the water will actually stop where it lands and that way we can actually see how good the sprinkler mechanism is working. So I made this arm on top of the sprinkler which was supposed to periodically push the water around which didn't quite work well at first but turns out it was just a little shy. The sprinkler was getting so good that the giant red silos started to break my immersion so I just turned them into giant corns instead. With the arm rotating we still had bad coverage. So I added another motor which made the sprinkler also move up and down periodically. With that addition, we achieved much higher coverage. I think the coverage we have in the close and mid range is amazing, but the long range definitely was weak. Which if you remember from earlier, it is likely due to the fact that I calculated the max diameter I had to achieve incorrectly. So if I overlay the correct diameter over the last footage here, it actually doesn't look bad at all. And so thanks for watching, if you think I made a good sprinkler, water that like button. See you next time.